Aloha, and welcome to Cosmic Questions with Spaceman Steve. Well, if we haven't met before, I'm an astronomer who works at the James Clark Maxwell Telescope right here in Hilo, Hawaii. And today, we will be answering the question, what is light? Well, it's May, and that means that the International Day of Light is coming up soon. And if you're like most people, you're probably thinking, there's an International Day of Light? Yes, May 16th has been dubbed the International Day of Light by the United Nations Educational, Scientific, and Cultural Organization, also called UNESCO. It's celebrated on May 16th because this is the anniversary of the first successful operation of a laser in 1960 by physicist and engineer Theodore Maiman. This invention has completely revolutionized the way that we live. In UNESCO's words, the International Day of Light is a call to strengthen scientific cooperation and harness its potential for peace and sustainable development. World peace through science! As an astronomer, I'm stoked. Because unlike other scientists, like biologists or chemists, we can't travel out to the things that we study to collect samples. Except in really limited cases like moon landings. And the reason that we can't do this is because everything is so ridiculously far away that it would take multiple lifetimes to travel there. And that makes getting grant money a little bit difficult. Since we can't go that far out into space, we have to let space come to us. And the way that we do that is through light. Light is the fastest traveling thing in the universe. Einstein said so. It travels at 299,792.458 kilometers per second, or about 11 million miles per minute. We cannot travel out to these nebulae and galaxies far, far away. But over thousands, millions, and billions of years, the light emitted from these objects can cross the vast expanses of our cosmos over unfathomable distances to end its ancient journey being absorbed by our cameras here on the Earth. But what is light? Light is an electromagnetic wave. Fear not. Though it sounds science-y, it's actually pretty simple. If we break down the word electromagnetic, we find two parts. Electro means electricity, and magnetic means magnetism. So let's start with electricity. Electricity is just the flow of charge, and charge is a fundamental property of the particles that make up matter. Things like protons, which have a positive charge, and electrons, which have a negative charge. It's pretty easy to make an electric field yourself if you have thin and fine hair, like my lovely wife. When certain objects are rubbed together, they create static electricity. One of these objects donates electrons to the other. The object that loses electrons becomes more positively charged while the object that gains electrons becomes more negatively charged. Your hair can stick to the balloon like magic, but really what's happening is the attractive force between charges and the electric field that you're creating in between them. Now, magnetism. Have you ever witnessed the power of a magnetic field? Yep, you have. Magnetism is the result of the motion of charged particles. For instance, an electric current running through a wire actually creates a magnetic field surrounding it. This magnetic field can actually attract and repel magnetic objects, which means if you run an electric current that is strong enough through a wire, it can actually mess with compasses. So electricity and magnetism are very, very closely related to one another. So cool, where does light fit in? Well, in the 17 and 1800s, a bunch of scientists were studying electricity and magnetism, trying to figure out ways that we could use these things in society. Most notably, there was Carl Friedrich Gauss, who was called the greatest mathematician since antiquity. There was André Ampère, who the unit of electric current, the amp, was named after, and Michael Faraday, who figured out how voltage can travel through bits of metal just based on induction. But 
The guy who tied all of this fantastic work together was Beard Goals here. James Clark Maxwell, the scientist that the telescope I work at is named after. Now in a feat of absolute brilliance and hard work, James Clark Maxwell was able to tie the concepts derived from previous scientists together into four equations. And while these equations might look mathy, they're actually surprisingly simple, given that they describe the nature of every electric and magnetic effect that has ever occurred throughout the universe. Remarkably, the mathematical equations that James Clark Maxwell was able to tie together show that not only does a changing electric field create a changing magnetic field, but a changing magnetic field creates a changing electric field. This perpetual cycle allows electricity and magnetism to work together to propagate waves freely through space at the speed of 11 million miles per minute. This is what we see as light. And while there are other ways to think about light, the most useful description for me is that light acts like a wave, just like waves on the ocean. A wave of light has a peak and a trough, and the distance between peaks or troughs is called the wavelength. Unlike waves on the ocean, if you change the wavelength of light, you actually change its color and its energy. As wavelengths get shorter, the light gets bluer and it has more energy. Hotter objects actually emit bluer. As wavelengths get longer, the light becomes redder and has less energy, so less hot objects emit red light. So here's an image of the double star system called Albireo. It's in the direction of the constellation Cygnus, and it's more than 400 light years away. That means that if we were traveling at the speed of light, 11 million miles per minute, it would take us 400 years to make it there. With what I just told you, without writing down any equations, which star do you think is hotter? Right, the blue one. You just did physics. So if you stretch and compress these waves a bunch, you will find that there is a whole spectrum of light out there beyond what our eyes can see. So there are many different types of light and you've probably heard of most of them. Infrared light is what SWAT teams use. Ultraviolet light from the sun is what we need sunscreen for. Radio waves help us text and call people on our phones. Microwaves help cook our food. X-rays show our broken bones so doctors know how to fix us better. Gamma rays create the Hulk. And visible light, all of the light that you have ever seen through your own eyes, every single color of the rainbow, is just a tiny sliver in this broader universe of different types of light. So this is why we build so many different telescopes as astronomers. Like a mechanic fixing a car often needs more than one tool to do a good job, astronomers often need more than one type of light to determine what's going on. This is because different types of light tell us vastly different things about the area of space that we're studying. For instance, take a look at this picture of the constellation Orion, also known as Kehehe Onakeiki in Hawaii. This is what you would see with your own eyes in visible light or through a visible light telescope. But point an infrared telescope at the same part of the sky and this is what you would see. All of the sudden, vast swaths of cosmic gas and dust are now visible to us. And these are showing the locations where stars and planets are being born. Now this would have been completely invisible to our own eyes if we didn't build the right detectors to see different types of light. So changing the wavelength that we observe at can dramatically add to our understanding of a region of space. So many different types of light are used together to get the big picture. Just using the light that lands on our detectors, we can figure out the temperatures and velocities of nebulae that are far away. We can figure out how much a galaxy weighs or how old the universe is. So take a moment to revel in the fact that everything that you have ever observed with your eyes is simply light landing on your pupils and that in the same physical space, there are hidden, 
glorious wonders that we can study with the right cameras and our own ingenuity. So happy International Day of Light. Go capture some light in a photograph or transmit some light as you text and talk with your friends. But most importantly, shed some light on this phenomenon by sharing this video. Mahalo Nui, thank you so much for watching. Until next time, I'm Spaceman Steve.